following the success of last week's NFC centric podcast, we decided to run it back, but with AFC predictions and whatnot. So this time is a little different. We have a Jets fan, a new friend, Kevin, joining us, who's a Dolphins fan. Yes. And of course, you know, him and Buffalo are synonymous. So Preston's the outlier. So Preston, how about you jump around and let us pick which division we talk about first? I like that pun there. Um, I'm a Bears fan, NFC North. So let's let's keep it North. Start with the AFC North. Ooh, going in big. Okay. Um, I got a big question then, which is who the hell is winning this division? It's got three three teams that are contending for the the, the division title right now. Like who who's taking it in? I think it's the Ravens. But the Browns are the sleeper pick, and I would not be surprised if they just snatch the division from their hands. Mm. Well, the Steelers' hands, but the Ravens are the clear-cut favorite, in my opinion. Okay, okay. I'm thinking Browns. I think, yeah. uh, I think they close the gap. I think that Baltimore continues to lose. They lost uh, J.K. Dobbins and Justice Hill. They lost Matt Judon. They lost uh, Orlando Brown. Um and I don't see a lot of pieces added, like the wideouts that they have uh, to the draft there from Minnesota. Uh, he's hurt already. Um, they've got a couple of guys, Sammy Watkins, less than you'd be shocked to know that he's hurt um, again, you know? So yeah. like, uh, they're still going to win like 11, 12 games. But keep in mind, they had to go on a five game win streak just to make the playoffs last year. And uh, I think the Browns with the, the offensive line, the running game, uh, OBJ is back, which could be a good thing, maybe not. And then I think that defense has a lot of pieces, especially that draft. They knocked it out of the park, in my opinion, in the draft this year. Uh, I think they've got um, some real weapons back there, too. Yeah, I, I respect that. I think that the um, you're probably right. The Ravens have bled talent this offseason. They, they, they let teams like Kansas City make moves that they should have been making. They got rid of all that around for what? Trade capital? You know, I mean, they're, they're letting go of important pieces of a dynamic offense to draft new talent, but that's not what you do when you're trying to contend for a championship where you have an MVP caliber QB, evidently, um, you know, and uh, an offense that can't stop putting up points, a defense that's one of the better ones of the league. You know, you're this is your time to compete. What are you doing letting this talent walk in order to gain, you know, what future assets? It's not, it's not the move you're supposed to make as a contender. Um, I think that, also, Lamar did get kind of figured out by defenses. And I think that, you know, he's, he's capable of, of upping his game once more and beating them, but he needs to work on his you know, ability to stay in the pocket and make plays happen from within there. Because once they flush him out, he's, he's running for it just about nine times out of 10. And uh, yeah, you know, rush three men, one QB spy. We've seen it from defenses across the league in order to shut him down. Um, it's consistent. Um, they're, they're just, they're just figuring out how to shut down offenses where he's running it. And, um, yeah, they, they, he needs to change it up if they want to actually succeed. So I don't have the Ravens winning this division. I think that the Browns are probably my favorites, but not by much over the Steelers. I do think they still have what it takes. Big Ben's looking better than he has in five, six years, according to a lot of people. Um, and, uh, I, I, I have a lot of faith that they can make things happen. Najee Harris is a brilliant addition to that offense. He gives them something that they sorely lacked uh, last season. Um, my only concern about that offense now is the offensive line. Can they make lanes for the for you know for Najee Harris? And can uh, you know can they keep Big Ben upright long enough to make uh, to make some more consistent plays downfield? Because he was having to live in that you know zero to eight yard range when passing because he didn't have time to let longer routes develop. Um, yeah, I think that it's between the Browns and the Steelers for the division. Ravens are probably coming in third, although I wouldn't be shocked to see them competing for that seventh seed um, in the AFC. Um, the only team I see without a chance is Cincinnati, and that's not really due to any fault of their own. I think they've been improving. That's just the odd team out in a competitive division. Yeah, I mean, they failed to address the offensive line, which mm -hmm. was a clear issue. It's the reason Joe Burrow was out for half the year last year. I agree with what you said about the Steelers. I think losing Villanueva, DeCastro, Pouncey, I believe, that's never going to help. Um, but the defense is just ferocious. Steel Curtain, they always are going to have a good defense. Big Ben is another concern, I would say. 
he's getting up there in age. Clay, Chase Claypool could have a sophomore slump very well. It's the preseason. I hate to overreact, but he was a little iffy. Led the league in drops in the preseason or something like that. There's a little cause for concern, mostly on offense, but I think with that solid defense, they'll be just fine. I think maybe sixth or seventh of the wild card is where I'd see them. I do agree, though, that the Browns have the most talent. I just don't know if they're going to be able to put it all together. The defense has been very solid. Miles Garrett put up like 15 sacks or so last year. Don't know the exact number, but he was a beast. Had a very strong case for defensive player of the year. I think the defense could let them down, but again, you look at that offense, there's not a single um, liability on that side of the ball. And I, I just see the Ravens, I don't know, they're a more developed te- or more established team. Lamar's there, and again, the offensive line is a little bang- not banged up. It's a little uh, worse from last year. but I, I just still see them coming out on top. The team that's going to win is going to be the one with the best quarterback. I think Baker's going to be the best quarterback in the division. I think Baker's going to come in second. I think Burrow comes in third because I think Lamar Jackson is going to be the best running back in that division. I, I don't want Lamar Jackson. Okay, so when I say this, we'll be like, oh, of course you're a Jets fan. You wouldn't know a good quarterback, blah, blah, blah. I don't want Lamar Jackson being my franchise quarterback. Like, I feel like Josh Allen, we'll get to the AFC East a little later. Josh Allen plays very similarly, but, like, can throw a football, and I'd want him to throw a football. You know what I mean? Like, I'm scared of Lamar Jack. Like, whatever, he's going to complete passes. Every quarterback is going to do that. But I, like you guys said, defense has kind of figured him out. And he can only run so much. And, you know, he doesn't really have the targets to throw to, like Baker does and uh, Ben does. And you guys were talking about the Steelers receivers. It's crazy how much we're talking about Deontay Johnson. Like how how he's an X factor in the 2021 NFL season is just insane to me. I mean, I don't think they have a true wide receiver one on that team. Juju fell off massively last year. You have the whole TikTok sideline scandal. Like maybe it's a little overplayed due to social media, but it's not positive attention to the team. I on their depth chart, Deontay Johnson is listed as the wide receiver one, but I they don't have a single guy who would give him over a thousand yards in my opinion i don't think they did have a single guy over a thousand mm-hmm. last season yeah Eric is just depth, the middle of the pack yeah. tight end yeah exactly yeah. there's a lot of wide receiver twos and threes no clear number one and it doesn't go quite deep enough to make to mean that they're always on you know sometimes uh-huh. you need that x-factor threat and deontay johnson's not it claypool isn't yeah. it juju's not it who is yeah could have been antonio brown oh yeah it was antonio brown i mean that that offense hasn't had that same factor since and uh, I think mm-hmm. Najee Harris could be a real significant addition, but he's, he's, he's a rookie and I don't tend to trust rookies right off the bat. You need, you need to give them time in the NFL and, uh, yeah, unless, and I until trust- unless Najee Harris is immediately impactful, then I don't trust him. Yet. Yeah. And I wouldn't trust anybody behind that O-line, not even Derrick Henry. Yeah. No. Like, <laughs> yeah. The O-line is going to be a real problem, but, Rook of all positions, if a rookie's going to come in and star right away, it's usually running back. Oh, yeah, um, especially oh, totally, a, especially a complete running back like mm-hmm. Harris is. And while Pittsburgh has no real number one, they have a lot of keep in mind, Chase Claypool was a rookie last year, right? So, what kind of development does he have? Deontay Johnson was his first real year as like kind of a focal point, you know, he's not a feature receiver, but a focal point in the offense. So, is he going to get any better? Juju mm-hmm. only played four seasons. And in his bad year, he had 97 catches and nine touchdowns. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, guys, like that's three good players. You know what I mean? Well, last thing you remember a couple of years ago before you had digs, the Bills had a similar thing, right? John Brown wasn't a real number one. Cole Beasley's not a real number one, but they're excellent ones and twos. Mm -hmm. So they have a team kind of like that where it's if if Claypool gets a little bit better, he's an excellent two. If Juju's mm-hmm. your slot receiver, he's an excellent slot receiver. They're just mm-hmm. not dynamic. So I get what you guys are saying. There's no real mm-hmm. guy that's going to draw double coverage. But yeah. I think that um, between Claypool's kind of red zone for presence, Johnson's kind of deep speed, and uh, Sh- Schuster Smith's kind of in the middle slot, they kind of cover and at least threaten all areas of the defense. Mm-hmm. And then with 
Najee uh, Harris, with his receiving ability coming out of the backfield, they're going to need it because you guys hit the nail on the head. That offensive line is horrific. Like, it's bad. They yeah. could easily derail the whole team's entire season. Yeah, and if, if they can keep Eric Ebron health, healthy, um, then it might be worth that while to just bump, bump Najee, you know, out wide every single play and run that set over and over and over again, short passes over the middle, short passes to the corners mm-hmm. consistently, and that's how they have to move the ball because they have no other choice. Yeah, they just dig and dunk their way down. Yeah. 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 Just hope they win week one, right? That's all we have to just hope they win week one. Who are they playing? Oh, oh, the oh Bills. they're playing us. Uh, yeah. I uh, I gotta say, I don't feel that confident in the Steelers week one for some reason. I just I don't know. See, I think there's a pretty good team that might might cause them some trouble. Well, they're missing uh Watt, right? So that's huge. Yeah, um, he's actually he's supposed to be reporting to practice tomorrow, they believe. The Steelers believe that. So yeah. oh, okay. But um, I, I put some faith in it. I, uh, Tomlin does, isn't usually wrong with that kind of stuff. AFC South, so, there's yeah. two teams to talk about. And if Great transition. doesn't play, there's one. Mm. So who wins the division and why? Well, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, it's a tourist race. So. Yeah, it's, it's the Titans or the uh, – are we going to get pre-knee injury Carson Wentz? Is Frank Wright going to work the magic and we're going to get that old version of Wentz? I don't have a lot of confidence in it, but if anyone's going to get it out of him, it's going to be uh, Frank Wright. Mm. Um, and if he can get him back to even close to that pre-knee uh, injury form in Philly, that's an ultra-talented uh, ultra roster. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, I think that Tennessee just – actually, I don't know, because Tennessee's defense is horrible too. So, like uh, – it's a real two horse race. Like you said, um, it'll be interesting to see. There's a lot of storylines. I want to, does Julio have anything left? Does uh, Wentz make a comeback? It'll be, it'll be, it'll be fun to watch, but it, yeah, those are the only two teams with a shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I have absolutely zero confidence left in Carson Wentz after watching the last three to two, two and a half years of him. There's just, I see no way he returns. I mean, a change of scenery can always be beneficial, but in the NFL, rarely do you ever see that. Like, you've seen guys like Tannehill improve a lot with a change of scenery. But he also put up decent numbers before. And especially after last year, the like, some of the throws Carson Wentz was making. I know Philly was a train wreck last year, but a lot of that fell on him. And you saw how they somewhat improved when Hurts came in. I just – I'd be shocked if – he is the guy there who leads them. If he's the, the reason they win more than eight or nine games. Yeah. I said this pretty recently um, about a few different teams. I said it about Tampa Bay about two years ago. I said it um, about Washington near the end of last season. And I'm saying about the Colts now, um, which is they've, they're sort of that team, that whole roster is just a quarterback away from, you know, championship contention. Um, and if they could get pre, you know, pre-injury Carson Wentz from, you know, back when, you know, when Sylvania blew up for the first time, um, if they could get that man back, then this team could legitimately try and contend for a Super Bowl. They'd be a fringe contender, but they'd be a damn good team. Um, and it's just impossible to predict whether or not we're actually going to get that. And I think that the fact that we don't know, the fact that his, in, his health is already a concern before week one, the fact that um, Quentin Nelson is, 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 might be missing some time too, I think. Or is he, is he back yet? I don't, I don't think so. I think they're both expected to be back, but I maybe probably not by week one. Yeah. Maybe week two or three is what I've been hearing, yeah. Yeah, and they had a couple other injuries sprinkled throughout the roster. I think that they're, they're perfectly capable. They're just not. I think they, we need a few weeks to really determine what this team's made of and if they can put it together. Until then, it's Tennessee all the way. But I don't know how much I like Julio Jones in Tennessee. I mean, is he gonna is he, is he gonna be taking over the number one spot from AJ Brown? Is AJ AJ Brown gonna you know, are they gonna be splitting targets? Is it two number one guys? And how much can we really expect Tannehill to manage this a pass heavy offense when the whole team has run through Derrick Henry for the past two years? Yeah, I mean, like uh, like Kevin said, the defense is a huge concern there. I I think the offense is going to put up numbers. I think Julio is a great addition. Him and A.J. Brown are probably a top five wide receiver duo in the league, maybe even top three. Obviously, you have the reigning rushing king, Derrick Henry, behind the same O-line or pretty much same O-line. I, 
I think they'll have a, they'll have a field day in the AFC South with a very easy schedule. Are they a true contender? Absolutely not. But it's the Titans versus the Colts and two punching bags. So I, I just don't see them losing that division. Mm-hmm. Rodrigo Blankenship is best kicker in that division. I think he's going to win the Colts a game or two. And that might hey, be d- dare factor. I say he looks a little like you, Steven. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't like the rec specs. And... Put on, put on some rec specs. Yeah, come on. I yeah, I feel like you could watch them. I think, I think it would be a great Halloween costume, and it would be a hit. So that's all I gotta say. <laughs> and, and he's got plenty of time to put it together. All he needs to do is bring, is bring himself to put a Colts jersey on, and and buy a Star Wars Lego set as well. Oh, that's important. That's that's crucial. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, I do think that the Colts are so close to being contenders. I think the Titans could run away with this division if the Colts fall flat. But um, Jacksonville and Houston, which one of them is really shooting for the number one overall draft pick this year? Because I don't think it's Jacksonville. Jacksonville's got uh, enough talent now, I think. They, they have improved quarterback play from this time a year ago, and that's admittedly not difficult to do. But that improved quarterback play is usually equitable to about two or three wins, and that takes you know that would have put them – you know what drafting fifth or sixth which would be a huge upgrade for them you know they don't need the number one overall pick next year they just need something something pretty good so they can start building some talent around this uh potential franchise quarterback yeah i mean in simple terms for houston you saw how bad they were last year with deshaun watson you take away him and they're just a train wreck yeah. i had them at one in 16 i think that's honestly reasonable mm. maybe two three wins would be accurate but it's hard I to just, imagine anyone's gonna 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 play worse. Exactly. Yeah. There, the there only two teams that say could be do might be like the Lions, maybe the Jaguars if it goes really poorly for them. But no team can compete for the number one overall pick like the Texans can this season. Yeah. Hmm. AFC West. We don't even have to waste any time. It's just like how many games are the Chiefs going to win? The Raiders are going to be interesting. The Broncos are just always a mess. And the Chargers, oh, let's see if they get 500. I think that... Uh, I disagree. Division. I think the Chargers... Oh, sorry, you go ahead, Kevin. My bad. Sorry. I was going to say, I think that's an ascending division other than the plummeting Raiders. I like the Broncos team. I think that they're in the same mix now as the Colts. I think they have a legitimate mm-hmm. Super Bowl contending team if you with minus a quarterback. Mm-hmm. I think they have no quarterback. But I think between Sutton coming back with Jerry Judy and Hamler and Noah Fant developing, I think that with Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon, I think Bowles turning a corner and uh, uh, what's his name? I forget the young guard that they had that was a former tackle. They drafted and moved him in the guard. He's like a scrappy guy. Like they've got some nice pieces on the line. Dalton Reisner. Yes. And then uh, on the defense, you know, who knows if uh, what, you know, what the Kyle Fuller is now added to that mix. Um, mm. And then you got Sertain Jr. added to They're getting the Miller back too, aren't they? Yeah. And then yeah. Simmons is probably the best free safety, if not top top two, three safeties in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like that defense. So Vaughn Miller's back, Bradley Chubb's there. Like if they get even mediocre quarterback play, I think they can win nine, 10 games. Mm. Yeah, I was all uh, across the Teddy Bridgewater hype train um, back when he was in Minnesota before mm-hmm. before it all went horribly wrong, and um, I still believe that he he could find a home somewhere. But if it wasn't going to happen in New Orleans, surrounded by all that talent, then it wasn't you know so uh, it wasn't going to happen for him in Carolina with the way things were going. I mm-hmm. think that they pro it, Carolina traded for Sam Donald to get rid of Bridgewater. And that feels like a sign for the Broncos for me. I mean, moving away from John Elway as GM, they've clearly changed their roster building strategy. Um, and I like Bridgewater. I just don't know if he's going to be enough to put them over. Yeah. I mean, I think Kevin hit the nail on the head. Like, it's a solid roster, but the mm-hmm. quarterback is such a major issue. Drew Locke was awful last year. Teddy Bridgewater struggled with a decent Carolina offense. Granted, they didn't have McCaffrey. That would have changed a lot. But he's shown time and time again, he's nothing more than a mediocre quarterback. Mm -hmm. Um, I really like the Chargers. I think they have the potential to win 12 games and beat Kansas City at least once. Mm -hmm. Uh, You saw how they did last year when Herbert came in. They were just 
for all those game, blown leads and chokes down the stretch in typical Chargers fashion, they missed the playoffs and were like seven and nine, I believe. But I like uh, just I like the direction they're going. They have a solid defense. Uh, Austin Eckler is a very solid running back, can help in the receiving game as well. And I think that Justin Herbert's ready to take that next step and maybe even be a top five quarterback next year. Now time for the main event, the AFC East Preston. You don't have any interest in this, so. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, give my, I'll give my bid for 30 seconds and then walk away. Um, I think this is the Bills division to lose. Miami's on the come up somewhat. Um, the Patriots are trying to hang around. We all know the Jets are going to struggle. I have it Bills, Dolphins, Patriots, Jets, obviously. Um, yeah, Bills win easily. Go ahead, everybody else. All right, fantastic. If you guys would let me get into it real quick, um, I think that the Jets finally have my sympathy. Um, they've, uh, you know, it's been pretty bitter us and them and the Dolphins, all three of us fighting for last place for a long time now. Um, I have finally got the, I finally have some sympathy for the Jets because they actually look like they're doing the right things, and I don't just don't see them winning right now. You know, they're making good moves that uh, they they brought in a good, you know thoughtful head coach who might actually have a plan for this roster um he's made good moves he's been you know hit by you know a couple you know a couple bits of bad luck i mean losing carl lawson for the season was pretty devastating for that for for this inaugural season of the uh of the uh you know the robert sala uh front office um but i think that uh i think that that they've got a lot they've got a lot to look forward to you know they just need to get through this year before they do um, I think that the Dolphins deserve a lot more credit than they're getting across the league, but I do think that you know they are still playing second fiddle right now. Um, we need to see some growth from Tua. I do think that he deserves a chance. I think he, he, people, people, you know, look down on him far too early, but uh, he's got a lot of potential, and I think that you know he's he's in a consistent offense. They haven't done a great deal to upgrade this team um through free agency but they did do a decent job on the draft and you know, there's a lot of young talent to look forward to um if they if they can gel they can compete this season um the patriots have finally learned what being a bad team is like they're overpaying for mediocre talent and expecting it get to win them games and in reality they're going eight and nine nine and eight and getting a bad draft pick and missing the playoffs wow is that something that the rest of the afc east is awfully familiar with um, it's, 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 it feels really kind of good to watch that happen. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit better still. Um, but I think that, I think that it's, it's going to be fun, um, watching the Patriots this year because they're either going to be really, really good and no one's going to know what to make of them or they're going to be mediocre, but they're not going to be bad. And, uh, I think that's honestly the best thing for them would be to be bad because they have, they have a roster that needs building. Well, does the Jets guy want to go, or do you want me to go next? No, the, the Jets guy is going to be last in the standing, so he'll go last. <laughs> yeah, I guess we can go in order of probable uh, finish. Um, the Dolphins this year, <clears throat> um, it's weird. I've never seen anything like it with all the Deshaun Watson rumors and stuff like that. It's very like um, – it's like they spent their offseason building the team – to try and accentuate and help to a much like, I guess, kind of like, you know, with Josh Allen, right. First year you had the, uh, the big receivers and uh, obviously that didn't work. So you switched to smaller. That's when you went with Brown and Beasley. Mm -hmm. And then you started to dial in on what he did and didn't do well and, and Taylor as such. So mm -hmm. Miami, what they've done is like they've banked on trying to surround Tua with a track team. Right. Mm -hmm. And two is when he's on his, what his strength is, is hitting guys in rhythm, hitting them in stride and hitting them so they don't have to break uh, stride and they can keep running after the catch. And that's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to kind of spray it all over the field. So they brought in Will Fuller and they drafted Jalen Waddle and Albert Wilson came back from COVID. So that's three guys that run four, three, um, if not four, two with, uh, <laughs> with Waddle. So what they've done now is they've, they've, attempted to change how defenses are going to play them so if you have waddle on one side and you've got um uh, what's his name fuller on the other you're going to see a lot of too high safety books mm -hmm. and what that's hopefully going to do is open up the middle for Devonte parker and mike Gesicki. so it's going to be rough it's going to 
I think it'll have more of an impact when they play the Patriots uh, than it will against the Bills because the Bills play that cover three, whereas the Patriots play a lot of man. But it's going to be interesting. Like, are you going to play? I don't care who the quarterback is. You're going to play man coverage against across the board against Fuller, Waddle, Wilson, Parker, Preston. Someone's going to get that. Mike, Mike is sick. Even the running backs that we have aren't great, but they're like Gaskins. He's 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 actually a decent receiver. Mm-hmm. South and Ahmed, same thing. The receivers they are not really going to threaten you on the ground, but they can catch. Um, mm-hmm. So I do in that term like what they've done. On defense, obviously, they brought in Jalen Phillips. Uh, Holland is probably is my pick of all the rookies to have the biggest impact on the Dolphins this year. But the main thing that they're, they're going to do, I guess, is or what's going to make or break the season is going to be much like the Steelers. It's going to be if that young offensive line they have, that they've invested all those draft picks, if they can hold up. If they can improve or they can you know, progress, then maybe Miami challenges for like a lead wild card berth. It's the Bills division to win, no doubt about it. I think the Patriots are a bit better than people give it credit for. I think they'll find a way to slow the game down. I think they'll find a way to grind the game out. I think they're going to run a lot. I think it's going to be a heavy play action. I think they're going to surprise people a little bit. I don't see them as mediocre. I see them as a cut above mediocre, but not within striking range of, of the Bills. I think the Patriots are going to win this week against Miami. I think that Miami's going to lose. And then uh, we'll see. And then the Jets, like you said, they're rebuilding. All right, Kevin, you only got about 15 seconds, but I know you got a website you got to plug. Oh, no, uh, no website, guys. You can find me at uh, Twitter at, at Kevin Gerard 13. Um, usually I just help out the Buffalo Fanatics and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, add me to Twitter and, and I'm sure we'll get into some fun arguments. All right, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>